I've been a fan of Lego ever since my dad introduced me to Duplo when I was two. The Lego group, however, is much older than I am, by 60 years, in fact. And through that time, many fans have been satisfied, many techniques have been innovated, and a lot of history has happened. Lego has launched dozens of product lines and tried to reach many audiences. They didn't even start making official Lego bricks until 1949, 10 years after their founding. And although LEGO is known for these interlocking bricks, I would say that another iconic part of their brand is the minifig. That, however, would not come about until 1975. And minifigs with moving arms and painted faces wouldn't come out until three years later when the famous set 600 was released. This set included a police officer who, although could not fit in his car, seemed to enjoy his job nonetheless. Look at his smile. On a quick side note, this fig was released in Series 18, except with a printed torso instead of a sticker for anyone who wants to own one. After the success of Set 600, the modern fig expanded into the castle, space, and town themes. At first, the addition of these new figs was rare, but by 2010, there were over 3,655 different minifigs, with several hundred being added per year. In addition to that, over 4 billion figs have been rolled off the assembly line by the end of 2010. This just goes to show how those happy little smiles became the face of a company that would grow to become one of the most recognizable producers of toys and collectibles. 2010 was a big year for minifigs, not only because of the four billion milestone, but also because it was the start of one of Lego's most signature lines, the CMFs or collectible minifigure series. As a store owner myself, I can say that these boys do sell and Lego knows it. Each series has roughly 16 minifigs that are sealed in blind bags and sent off to stores. Those series have ranged from unique to Lego figs all the way to sports players and licensed themes such as Simpsons and Harry Potter. And in my professional opinion, some of these should never have left the design room. I mean, just look at it. It's, it's so just not right. Anyway, many people clearly do not share my opinion about these as they are insanely popular. And like I said, they do sell. Each individual blind bag sells for about $4.99 with the whole set going for $299 on lego.com. If you're looking for a specific fig, you can pay even more than that with this Viking costing almost $8 and that's a series 20 figs. The older ones can be way more than that. By the way, shameless plug here, go check out our Brickling store as we do have some of these. Links in the description. However, the price for some of these can be worth it to collectors, and if I wasn't broke, would be worth it to me. After all, some of these figs are very unique and rather cool looking, even though someone who doesn't collect them. And that's where we get into why these are such a great idea from LEGO. They appeal to collectors of all different types. They look less like toy building sets, which unfortunately too many who do not build LEGO consider LEGO to be. The minifigs, however, come as a unique design, each looking great on a shelf or in a display case. And maybe most importantly, it has a little bit of a gamble to it. You remember earlier when I mentioned that they came in blind bags? Well, I think that's a major selling point and a great profit generator for LEGO. People will buy a bunch of these and open them all to see what's inside. They also make great free advertising, as when I search opening LEGO on YouTube, the first response is opening all 33 LEGO series blind bags which, as we all know, the YouTube algorithm really likes. This brings LEGO more income and maybe even some people who don't purchase any other products, which I think is great as it serves as a gateway drug into this hobby and it costs about as much. Anyway, back to the blind bags. You would think that if the purpose was fairness or a lottery gimmick, then they would be truly blind, right? Bags would go out in boxes, get put on the shelf, and that would be that. Nobody would know not even the store. Well, that's not quite how it went. You see, Lego had a little secret, a way to quality check, or maybe even make sure the outlet stores knew what they had. Regardless, they weren't entirely fair. That's right. It's possible to know the minifig without opening it. A lot of you are probably thinking, well, you can just feel around. And while that's certainly true, that's not what this was. No, there was a much more accurate way. Uploaded on June 19th in 2012, a video by BrickSpy showcased the method to find out what was hidden in the bags. You see, each bag had a barcode on it. Some of you are thinking, oh, well, that's just for inventory. Well, yes, 
but it's not an inventory code for the bag. It's an inventory code for the minifig inside. That's right. Using a simple app called Minifig Collector by Nick Jansma, you could figure out what was inside of any bag with a quick picture. Now don't whip out your phones and head to the nearest Walmart because it doesn't work anymore. The app still exists and it's very useful for managing your collection, but Lego wised up after a year and when the Series 3 came out, the barcodes had been removed. So sounds like that's it, right? Game over, no way to find Mr. Gold. Well, you couldn't anyway because all the Toys R Us locations posted signs saying that they had searched and removed any Mr. Golds they had found. So it didn't really matter, but don't despair. Lego still had one more trick up their sleeve. You see, sometimes on these type of blind bag products, companies will add what is called a bump code. It can be as hidden as little tears in the plastic or as pronounced as small beads slipped into the plastic ceiling. The result is the same. If you feel for them, you'll notice a code. It works a lot like Braille. Well, Lego, wanting to make sure that local stores could adequately inventory, added these bump codes. You can see an example here. Basically, you check along the dots and then you compare them to a chart and boom, you know what you got. Lego seems to have believed that this was a secret. And when I was researching this video, I was able to find Reddit posts with bump codes all the way up to series 18. And while I couldn't feel any, it is entirely possible that they still exist today. So if you do find any, please let me know. I would be very interested. And if somebody already has codes for series 20, please do post a link below. Now, because I know many of our audience are sellers themselves, I will add one final note here about selling these figs. Do not buy them in store or on lego.com. We personally always look for a very good discount on these because there are some figs that sell for below $4.99 and it is not always worth it. That said, if you can get wholesale or bulk pricing, totally go for it. Owning a Lego store, you get lots of parts coming in and out. I've always been interested in the history behind these pieces and the Lego brand, and I hope that you enjoyed this little journey into my curiosity. If you're interested in seeing more of this informational content, please comment down below what you would like to learn about. Thanks for joining me on the first episode of Brick History. If you don't already know, we do have a Discord and a Patreon down in the description below. You can go ahead and click those links and join. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Paul from Just a Brick in the Bucket, and I hope you have a great day.